can only assume this morning that sometime recently, most all of you have taken a bath or a shower. No. Yeah, no, in Linda's case, that's kind of questionable. Maybe a few of the rest of you have. I should have gotten up a little earlier, but yeah, you know about a bath and a shower. It feels good, doesn't it? Getting wet, getting all sudsy and lathered up and then rinsing off. You feel nice and clean. You know how hot water can help um, relax your muscles if you've had a hard day at work or if you've been sleeping overnight. And you know how cold water can really refresh you. I only take a, a cold shower one in one state in the Union. When I'm in Wisconsin, I always take a hot shower. But when I'm in Louisiana, I take a cold shower. If you've ever been to Louisiana or spent any time there, you know about that. I'm one of those people, though, that has to take a shower when I get up in the morning. I have to do it. It's the very first thing I do. It invigorates me. It gets me excited for the day. And then by taking a shower, it allows me to begin what's really important with my day, and that's to have some coffee. So get up, take a shower, get going. I like water. I like being submerged in water. A bath, a whirlpool, a swimming pool, or maybe the ocean. It's good. But today, this morning, I don't want to talk about a regular bath. I want to talk about the great bath. It's the bath that Ada Jane over here, right over there, Ada Jane just received. It's the bath that you remembered this morning when the kids sprinkled you with those branches. It's the once in a lifetime washing that you've had. And it can happen when you're an infant, a newborn, a young child, a teenager. For some of you that great bath happened as an adult. And you already know that we call that great bath baptism. Baptism comes from the Greek word baptisma. Baptisma, which means an immersion in water or a washing in water. Now the first thing you need to know, which I've already told you about the waters of baptism, is that they are not special waters. The waters came right out of the tap around the side of the building. The same water that we used in that swimming pool is the water that we drew for the baptismal font this morning as well. You may have cooked your beans in that water from the tap last night. It is good old wonderful Madison water that the Madison water utility <laughs> pumping stations have pumped out for you. Renee Puzak asked me to say that little plug for her. <laughs> It is very Lutheran for us to say that the waters of baptism are simple, everyday waters that are used in connection with God's command and, in co and in with his word. We believe that baptism is a sacrament because we believe it's been commanded in the scriptures that we should go out and do it. We believe that we have been called on to baptize all nations as we read in the Gospel of Matthew, to baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It is in our baptisms that we enter into a new life with Christ and begin our lives in the community of believers sitting out here on the lawn and all over the city and all over the world. Now probably some of you, like I, have been asked in my life, have you been reborn? And when I'm asked that question, my answer is immediate. Yes, absolutely, I've been reborn. Based on Jesus' discussion with Nicodemus in the third chapter of the Gospel of John, one must be reborn through the powers of baptism. We are reborn with water and the Spirit. Yes, I've been reborn. So have you. We are physically born at some point in our, in, well, at the beginning of our lives. We are physically reborn from our, we are physically born from our mother's womb. And when that happens, we enter into a family, a big family sometimes. Ada's family's all right over here. And you know that that family you entered into, your biological family or your adopted family, is made up of all kinds of people, men and women, short and tall people, skinny people, fat people, people who live legally, people who live illegally, people who do all kinds of things. They're part of your family. And then in our baptisms, we are spiritually reborn into another family, the family of believers. 
In baptism, we become part of the community of Christ. And as you look around you on the lawn this morning, you can tell that that community of Christ is made up of all kinds of people as well. Fun people, not so fun people, tall people, short people, men, women, people that live in DeForest, Sun Prairie, Madison, Bain, Hong Kong. Even, even people who live in Gainesville, Florida that don't seem to be such good people, they're part of the family of God. Baptism ushers in a new form of community life for its recipients. It is a life lived out with other people. We don't live this baptismal life in isolation. It's a life of faithfulness, a life of devotion. It's a life that includes a regular communal family meal that we're going to eat in just a few minutes together out here on the lawn. Today, communion is a picnic because we're outside, and that's okay. A baptismal life is a life of fellowship. Sometimes we need to support one another when we struggle. Sometimes we simply get together to have fun. And sometimes we reach out to assist the community around us, people who are in need. It is now a life of walking wet. You are all wet, and you are now walking that life. On Tuesday, when I was actually writing, I was actually typing that line of my sermon. It's a life of walking wet. When I looked up and Bob Hefty was standing in my doorway, he's a member of this congregation, many of you know. Bob was standing in my doorway with a cart full of food to take down to the food pantry. But I was writing about walking wet and I started to laugh because I was thinking how funny this was. Bob had a cartload of food to take to the food pantry. But in order to get to the food pantry, he had to walk through West Hall. And West Hall was all set up for dinner for 15 people who are homeless and who have been living in our building this week. And then when Bob got down to East Hall, he couldn't just quickly push the cart of food into the food pantry because there was a Red Cross blood drive going on where many of you were donating blood. And I just laughed because it was clearly, clearly a visual image of people who walk wet. The images in the lower level of Lakeview last Tuesday were clearly of a group of people who know what walking wet is all about. But perhaps the greatest thing about this great bath that we've all had is that it is a gift. Baptism is like a great big package filled with presence that God showers upon us. Baptism, in this bath of baptism, we get friendship with God. We get the presence of Christ. We get the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We get control over the power of sin. We get a new family. We get a new identity. And we get the promise of a resurrection into eternal life. In this great bath that we've had with regular Madison tap water and with the presence of God's word, we get the glorious promise that we are children of God. And as the book of Romans reminds us, there is nothing, nothing in all of creation that can separate us from the love that God has for us. So you have been bathed. Ada has been bathed. Boy, is she quiet now. She's with her mama. <laughs> it has been bathed. You have been bathed. We have been reborn. You are a child of God. You are inheritors of the kingdom. Remember your baptisms. Now go ahead and live and walk wet every day of your lives. Amen. Amen. Lynn is going to lead us in the hymn. Jesus loves the little children. We're going to sing it through two times. Take it away, Lynn.
took a glitch last night too. Just so you know, it's not you. <laughs> I would like to bring forward confirmation students now, but I'd like to start with the ninth graders. Ninth grade confirmation students, come on up. Move it! You know who you are. There you go. Well, three of them are here. Okay, come on up right here. Stand right here and look out there. Here's another one. All right. Don't look at me, look at them. I've seen your faces only too often. <laughs> eighth grade confirmation students, come on up. If you're an eighth grade confirmation student and you're here this morning, come on up. Move it. You know who you are. All right. You stand in front of the ninth graders. Okay, now kneel down. <laughs> just checking. So I just wasn't sure. If you are a new seventh grader to confirmation and you are very frightened and you should be, come on up. <laughs> I gotta see who we got here. Oh, it's that year of all boys. Oh. oh. I don't know. These are some of the confirmation students who are here with us this morning. We begin class next week. Seventh graders down in front. If you want to know anything, ask the crew in the back. All I can say is, get ready. It's going to be wild. Let's give them a hand as they go back to their seats. Christine Stam is our Sunday School Superintendent. Would she come forward? Where did I lose you? Oh, there you are. And I'm going to ask Christine, who does a remarkable job with our Sunday School program, to call forward the staff that are here today, and we will install all of you together. Brenda Haslow, Annette Ponell, Amy Luke, Colleen Curl, Nancy Stilwell, Leah Boyd Potter, Nate Campbell, we still need at least one more teacher, so if there's anybody who feels the spirit. So that spirit might move you throughout the day today. So feel free to call Christine when the spirit moves you to teach Sunday. Is the spirit moving you? I'm trying to talk Elizabeth into it. She's saying the spirit's not moving her. Our Lord, who came among us as a servant, calls us to faith and a life of loving service to our neighbor. You stand among us this morning as those called to lead our children in the upcoming Sunday school year. You are a gift from God to inspire us to love and to do good works. Will you, Sunday school staff, assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, answer, I will when I ask God to help me. I will when I ask God to help me. Will you, Sunday school staff, carry out this ministry in accordance with the teachings and the practice of the Lutheran Church? If so, answer, I will when I ask God to help me. I will when I ask God to help me. <laughs> will you, Sunday school staff, be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace and in prayer? If so, answer, I will and I ask God to help me. I will and I ask God to help me. <laughs> There's a lot of questions. Will you trust in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of God with a godly life? If so, answer, I will and I ask God to help me. I will and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and the compassion to perform them. Christine Stam, Sunday School Superintendent, and Sunday School staff, I now install you as the 2010-2011, wow, 2010-2011 Sunday School staff in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go ahead and clap.